Our presentation is on uh, uh, looking at uh, barrage strategy release impacts um, on the Murray Mouth in Kurong uh, with a focus on uh, Murray Mouth openness. Uh, this work builds on a model developed by BMT WBM, um, which, uh, has, which is a 2D uh, true flow model. Uh, so just sort of continuing on from what Claire's presentation is, obviously the Kurong um, very important, uh, and the barrages is the main focus of my presentation is looking at the Gulwa barrage um, and the Twitchery barrage is where the, the, I guess the main water is released from. Um, and so these barrage releases have a number of impacts um, on the, the Kurong and the lower lake and the Murray mouth. Uh, so it affects Kurong salinity, water level, um, Provides connection. Uh, each of the barrages now have a fishway, which allows uh, fish migration. Um, uh, water releases also uh, can stimulate um, environmental cues, so stimulate fish migration. Um, and of course, uh, what my main focus on is the Murray mouth openness. Uh, so the Murray mouth openness is uh, balanced, is determined by the, the forces which act on it, so looking at wave energy, tide, barrage flows, and also the sediment composition. Um, beach sand is the main source of uh, sediment uh, which uh, deposited in the Murray Mouth. Um, and so without, without any flow from the barrages, the, the, the tide is naturally asymmetric. Um, this means that there's, more, there's a higher velocity um, entering the mouth than there is when it's on the flood tide than the ebb tide. Um, so uh, sediment is deposited on the flood tide and then on the ebb tide the velocities are lower and so that sediment is resuspended and um, isn't uh, taken back out. Uh, so just a little bit of uh, history of the Murray Mouth closure. So it was closed in 81 um, and then of course in, during 2002 in the Millennium Drought uh, there was dredging. Uh, so more recently, um, after the high flows, um, declining flow conditions um, saw sand accumulate. Uh, so this is just a bit of a, um, a snapshot of the, the symmetry data taken by SA Water on a six-week period through 2014. Um, you can see the um, sediment um, accumulating through here. Uh, during this period, uh, flow was about uh, one to 2,000 megalitres per day out of the barrages. Um, the exception was August. Um, when there was a period of uh, average 10,000 megalitres per day. Um, and in this, the shows that there was some sediment removal from the, the Murray Mouth. Um, however, uh, flow con conditions continued to deteriorate. Um, and then in January 2015, uh, dredging recommenced, which you can see there starts to recommence and dredging of the Murray Mouth began. Uh, so, oops. so on the back of that, uh, we undertook some true flow modelling uh, to look at um, barrage operations and how you could use uh, the water released from the barrages uh, to best, um, I guess, prevent sediment accumulation within the mouth and keep the mouth open. Uh, so the true flow model um, has a sediment transport model. Um, it includes a waves um, and a salinity model. Um, and then tide, wind, and evaporation, and southeast flows are all um, incorporated in that model. Um, so this was the model was calibrated um, through four, through 14 gauges uh, through in the Murray Mouth and Kurong. Um, so that was using um, tide and salinity data, um, and the bathymetry data was also used to uh, calibrate the sediment um, accumulation. Uh, so this is the graph to focus on here. So you can see in August, this was the 2014 period, the August, that's where the, the higher flows occurred. Um, so with the sediment transport model, we managed to get a good calibration of uh, the total volume of sediment um, accumulating. Um, however, the distribution of the sediment uh, wasn't modeling what was observed. Um, and this over time would affect the um, hydrodynamics of the system. Um, so because of that, we uh, looked at a period of sort of three month period of, of modelling and looking at barrage flows. Um, and so this is some scenarios that were undertaken. Uh, so the, the scenarios we were looking at is the flow out of Twitchery and Gulwa. Each of these scenarios had a uh, 10,000 megalitre per day um, 
uh, flow. Uh, so there was a looking at an even split, 90-10 uh, split, so favouring Gulwa or favouring Twitchery. Um, so as you can see here, there's a rapid um, removal of sediment. So this is the flux of sediment out, accumulated flux of sediment out of the Murray mouth. Um, so there's a rapid um, ink flux of sediment out of the mouth, um, and then there's, this is because at the time only, there was only about one to 2,000 megs a day, so the initial conditions there was a lot of sediment accu accumulating. Um, and then, so over the month, uh, things start to um, equalise. And so these are the, the results are, so this is the constant, oh sorry, the, um, just a, so this is favouring Twitchery, the black line, um, and then favouring Gulwa is, is the red line. So you can get a, a higher rate of sediment removal if you uh, favour Gulwa. Um, another piece of modelling that we did uh, using a Kurong one-dimensional model uh, looked at um, the salinity and um, water level in the Kurong North and South Lagoon. Um, so these are for uh, the same flow splits for Gulwa and Twitchery. Um, however, this is a, a lower flow of only 5,000 megs a day. Um, so you can see here that the Gulwa, um, Gulwa channel is in, Gulwa release is, in, is green, um, and the Twitchery release is blue. So you, um, for the, the Gulwa release, there's a, there's a higher salinity um, and a lower water level down here um, if you favour Gulwa. So there's obviously a compromised um, salinity compromise if you favour Gulwa for um, Murray mouth openness. Um, the next set of uh, modelling that we undertook was looking at uh, pulsing. So this is um, having the same constant flow rate of 10,000 megalitres per day, but having um, releasing every second day or every third day. So you'd release 20,000 megalitres or 30,000 megalitres. Um, again, uh, this had an even flow split. Um, and again, uh, we found, sorry, not again, but uh, we found that by providing a pulsing scenario, so you're having a higher flow for a shorter number of days, um, after, after time you'd have more sediment uh, removal from the mouth. Uh, the final, final bit of uh, modelling that we underdid was trying to use uh, tidal cues uh, to, 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 to influence how you'd operate those barrages. So releasing on the outgoing tide or the or during low tide. Um, this was trying to increase velocities uh, during the outgoing tide to try and uh, remobilize that sediment for a uh, removal. Um, and this shows also that uh, during those, for both the pulse and scenarios, we achieved a greater amount of sediment removal um, than both the constant pulsing and, and also for this 50-50 uh, split, uh, you'd you could get a greater amount of sediment removal than the 90-20 the split for, 90-10 split for the Gulwa. Um, so in summary, the barrel release location, release location um, impacts the Kurong and North Lagoon, and South Lagoon. Um, uh, the modelling shows that uh, the climate uh, could be an effective, utilising climate could be an effective tool uh, to maintain Murray mouth openness. However, the modelling was just undertaken for a short three-month period, um, so need to, a lot more work needs to look at uh, other climatic conditions, um, when would be the best time to undertake this modelling, um, as well as looking at uh, Kurong salinity impacts and water level connecting from any um, of these pulsing scenarios. Um, there's also a big question around logistics. Um, at the moment, most of the gates are manually operated. There's only 13 gates on Twitchery which can be remotely operated so there would be a lot of um, work that needs to done that done by SA Water to, to implement any of these change, changes which require rapid opening and closing of barrages. Um, there's also the, the need to develop a valid barrage releasing strategy to look at all the climatic conditions, um, tidal flows, uh, levels and salinity conditions in the Kurong and trying to get a balance um, on how all those would fit together. Uh, yes, thank you.